This is Wilhelmina here from um, the southernmost tip of African continent, Cape Town. I have been involved with the World March actively since, um, well, I've been, uh, I've been part of the World March action since 2000. On the 24th of April, we always think of, of the women of Bangladesh and we think of the conditions under which they work. And our thoughts always go back to that. And we've always said never again. So I think we, um, you know, with all this pandemonium, with all this taking care of our health, we must, must never forget that. There's always, always someone out there that needs our help, that always still needs us to fight on their behalf because, you know, their voices are not being heard. Um, what they do is not being seen. So as activists, as um, women who have the means of um, using these platforms, we need to make sure that they're not forgotten, that their voices are still heard. Why it's important to focus on the action of transnational corporations and what are the transnational corporations acting in South Africa? The transnational corporations, as we know, they have chosen to make their money, to grow their companies, to um, exploit people, to, to increase their profits by taking their business, their factories, their manufacturing, um, whatever it is they're involved in, taking it to poorer countries, to underdeveloped countries, to the third world. And where are most of those countries? But in Africa. So it's a, a for, for, for people in Africa, you know, we've been colonized, we've been um, brutally, um, our resources been brutally taken away from us. So, um, so it's nothing, I wouldn't say it's nothing different, but it made it, made it easier for these um, transnational corporations to come into Africa and to set up their, their roots here and to continue, you know, exploiting, colonizing and sapping the country of all its wealth and its resources, basically stealing. So I think it's no different to any other, um, other underdeveloped or developing country. We find them all, it's the banks, it's the mining industries, it's the finance houses, it's the manufacturing companies. It's from your Netflix to your Coca-Colas, to your McDonald's, to your Walmarts, to your uh, Anglo-Americans, um, to your uh, huge uh, multinational uh, finance companies. So they're all over. I mean, uh, as Walmart is given, me, especially the opportunity to see different parts of the world. I mean, you step into a mall and it's like going into a mall in any other part of the world, the same shops, the same uh, fast foods, the Kentucky, the McDonald's. So, you know, it's, it's that's been globalized. That's just been duplicated all over the world. What was interesting to me when I was just kind of going through the list of these um, multinationals was that um, one of the things that that is very unique apparently to South Africa and the lockdown and the restrictions is that uh, the sale of alcohol and tobacco cigarettes have been um, outlawed. You're not allowed to buy that in the shop. It's part of the, the, the you know, the, the ban on, on what you can, what you cannot buy. So there's been a huge, huge outcry, uh, um, kind of protest around this, you know, people who are unhappy, especially about the sale of alcohol and, and then cigarettes. And then when I looked at the, at the most powerful, um, TNCs in South Africa, I saw it was one was the, the, the British American tobacco company. And, uh, they have a huge investment in South Africa. So obviously the whole protest of, you know, around um, the sale of, of cigarettes because 
They quoted millions uh, uh, that South Africa was losing in revenue and argued that, oh, you could be using this money to fight the virus, to feed the poor. Um, so it was, they were behind, obviously, the protest of, of that the ban on, on cigarettes must be lifted. So it just shows you the power and just what to what extent these, uh, you know, multinationals or TNCs will go to make sure that they continue operating, continue making a profit here in South Africa. How women suffer because of this action, uh, the presence of a transnational corporation? There's a lot of focus on those multinationals that are in the health sector, the pharmaceuticals, where we get our medicines from. Because um, at the beginning of the outbreak of the virus, you know, there was a lot of talk about building and keeping your immune system healthy and strong. So obviously there was a huge um, a need or, or people were rushing out to buy vitamins and supplements and medication and immediately people could then see how expensive this medication was and how, um, how they were raising the prices just at the time when people needed it most. And you all know that the, 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 the main carers in our society are women, are, are the women who have to take care of the elderly, not only of their own children, but also of the elderly. So with these multinationals just having the um, monopoly on, you know, what medicines are sold and the high price of it, and it's been ridiculous just to get a, a, a vitamin C or, you know, just a, a, a headache tablet, for example. They, they know more on the, on the shelves of the, of the, 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 the pharmacy. It would always be the women in the household that has to, to nurse the sick and to make you that, uh, give you that little tablet for your headache or whatever. So if you cannot afford this and even if you can afford it, maybe have a, a couple of, you know, cents to buy it. They're just not there. But then where are they? It just means that these companies are withdrawing or withholding that supply so that maybe the day comes when the shops are open, it will be there and they can, of course, um, uh, just increase the prices. So so the effect of, of, of the transnationals and the um, operations here in South Africa I think the, the ownership of especially the medical supplies, the ownership of the banks, which makes it difficult for women, you know, in society. I mean, there's still discrimination, inequality in, in just uh, in terms of what women earn. Um, so women's access to, to the banks, um, women's access to, to money, and we all know, you know, Capitalism it revolves around you having money in your pocket to survive. We go to where are women situated in the economy? And it's, again, the carers, it's domestic workers, it's the agricultural workers also, and also the role the multinationals play in, in the ownership of, of manufacturing the equipment, the equipment of, of farmers, the farm, the equipment, uh, um, not only the equipment, but just owning huge, uh, you know, farms, especially as you know, in South Africa, um, the wine farms, it's, it's something that, that, yeah, it's a, it's a, a lucrative business. So the control of women's lives through just the ownership of these multinationals, the ownership of, of the, the production of the machinery, um, you know, the, 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 the control of, of the medication. I mean, so, I mean, we all know that, that, um, we, we have to use, um, contraceptives. I mean, that comes through the medical, uh, uh, uh councils as well. So the access to that for women, you know, contraceptives and, um, for, for young women in terms of, uh, uh, puberty. So it's part of your daily life. I mean, and because these huge, huge companies are operating in each and every country all over the world, 
the control they have over your life, the control they have over who can buy their products and how much you must pay for it, you know. I mean, it's enormous, it's immense. And so you don't, you don't have the options as a woman. You have less options as a woman, I should say. We need to be very careful when we make our demand because, you know, inequality, the inequality uh, in South Africa, especially, as you know, we are uh, one of the, the higher, the country that has one of the highest um, levels of inequality in our society, in the society. Uh, Vilomina, uh, what is the importance of uh, international feminist anti-capitalist movement like the World March of Women in this current, current context? I think it is for me extremely important that we, um, as the World March of Women, be in the forefront that we organize women across the globe. Because this coronavirus, because it is so destructive, it is so new. We, you know, we are people are dealing the scientists, the the um, doctors are dealing with a new virus. Nobody knows. There's no vaccine. They don't know. There's a, there's a lot of uncertainty. So what has happened in the well, world, in families, in societies, and and let's say in the countries, is that we tend to look inward. We tend to just be looking at what's happening here, periphery, like, you know, it just becomes so, we, we say in English, parochial. We think of our own region. We think of our own village. We think of our own country. So we become very nationalistic. I mean, you just listen to that idiot Donald Trump. We can fall into a trap of becoming very nationalistic. And just thinking about, I mean, look, already the borders are closed. Nobody can come in. Nobody can go out. So that adds to our feeling of, here we are in Cape Town. Here we are in South Africa. We need to look after our own people. We need to look after ourselves. You know, we mustn't allow other people to come in here and bring the virus to us. So... There's a danger of us becoming too, again, patri patriotic, nationalistic, you know. Look, mm -hmm. you know, we only got so many people dead. Oh, we only got so many people uh, positive. So the war yeah. marches past become so much more important in terms of bringing us together, sharing our stories, you know. We need to also just be careful of how we organize ourselves. Because, yes, I know that we live in an age of technology, of Twitter and Instagram. And, but we need to find a way still. We must be reminded that the world march of women is rooted in the work with grassroots women who do not have access to Twitter who do not have an access to a cell phone or to Skype like the two of us can talk now. And how do we reach to them? Because I can tell you, people are starving. There is no food. There is no money. But we need to find a way of not lo losing touch with the base, with where we have focused, always focused our work on. And that is the working class of women who are out there who um, don't have the space to isolate, do not have the healthy food to keep their immune systems high, you know, do not have the luxury of not earning money. The Walmart of women needs to look at new ways of organizing, yes, but at the same time, I think, yes, keeping up the work through the those who can Twitter. Unfortunately, that's going to be maybe the way we have to live, but we still have to find that way of touching um, and, you know, remaining and keeping our finger on the base, you know, the grassroots. 